So Gehazi went back to Elisha and said, she's getting, her husband's getting older and she doesn't have any children. So he said, uh, as they were leaving out that door, he said, one year from now, you're gonna have a son. My name is Sandra Hancock, and I want to thank you so much for tuning in to our broadcast. Now, today's message is part two from last week, The Bold and the Fearless. And what we talked about, we talked about walking in power and walking in authority and having boldness to do what God has called us to do. This message was filmed in Pearl, Mississippi at New Life Christian Fellowship. Be blessed by this message. I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Lord, I'm declaring there is hope Right here and there is freedom Come on, I feel the Holy Ghost say I speak Jesus Come on, we need to fill this atmosphere with His name today Say Your name is life. Yes, it is. So break every stronghold in this place. Shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. And this lady, I'm sure she kind of laughed all right. <laughs> but guess what? One year lady, later, she had a son in her arms. Well, the Bible doesn't say how old this child was, but he must have been old enough to walk and to go out into the field where his father was working. He developed a headache, and so the servant, he told the servant, take him to the mama. That child died on that mother's lap. Imagine finally having a son, and that son dies. Well, that woman didn't become a warrior. She became a warrior for Jesus. She had a boldness to her. She had a fearless faith. She said, man of God, you gave me this child, and devil, you're not going to take him from me. And what she did is she went in that upstairs room, closed that door, went down to the field, told the servant, get me a donkey. We're going to see the man of God. So Elisha, decides to go with this lady. He goes in the room that she built for him, opens the door, goes in and gets on top of that little boy, eyes on eyes, hands on hands. After a couple of times, he sneezed seven times. There's that number seven means victory. Some of you got some victory in this house today. You're going to leave out of here. Number eight means new beginning. So you're going to receive victory over some things today, and there's going to be a new beginning as you walk out these doors. I decree and declare that in Jesus' name. So she took, he gave the child to that mother. Her fearless faith saved that child. Your faith can change your family, your children, your lives. What if she had taken maybe a doctor's report? Well, that's it. But she wouldn't give up. So you need to keep praying for those wayward children. You need to keep praying for that miracle in your body. That persistent prayer pays off. Those bold, persistent prayers. Some of you need to hear that. Keep praying. Some of you have come to the point you think, I, there's no use of praying. They're not changing. They're getting worse. Usually they get worse before things turn around. Right. Yes, yes. Keep praying for those lost husbands. Some of y'all have anointed their shoes. <laughs> you have put stickers in his car. Prayer calls and is under the pillow. 
got so much oil in his shoes that they nearly slip off his feet. (laughs) And you see no change. You have beat them over the head with the Bible. (laughs) But you know, their time's coming. Just love them and show them Jesus. Be persistent in your prayers. So I want to ask you, this is a fearless ladies conference, but for you to get healed, you've got to get real with yourself. What is your fear? See, we're living in a world today that is perilous times. Do y'all agree? And there's a lot of fear in the world. But this is not a time for the church to hide. This is the greatest opportunity for the church to rise and shine for Jesus. And I believe the darker the day, the brighter his church is going to become. And I believe you women of God, Isaiah 61 says, arise and shine. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord is shining upon you. Some of you have been knocked down in life. But you know, defeat is not that you get knocked down, it's when you refuse to get up. And some of you are like an energizer bunny. You get up, but now it's time for you to pick yourself up and take back what the enemy has stolen from you. You gotta get, you gotta get bold, you gotta get radical, you gotta get fearless and say, no more Satan. Micah 7, 8 said, rejoice not against me, O my enemy. When I fall, I will arise. And when I arise, I'm stronger than ever before. Fear. But there is a spirit. So I'm going to do just a little teaching on fear. And thank you for being honest about that. Because I think so many people have different fears. But we just learn to live with them. Or we don't live with them, we exist with them. But there is something called a spirit of fear that enters our lives through trauma. And some of you, maybe it was through the loss of a child. It may have been through abuse. It may have been through a divorce. But it's a spirit of trauma that comes into your life. Now, this spirit of trauma leads to a spirit of infirmity. What is the spirit of infirmity? It is a disease that the doctors say there's nothing we can do for you but treat the symptoms. Which is just about every sickness that's out there today. Amen? Arthritis, migraines, I mean, we just could go cancer. But that's the spirit of infirmity. You know, when the woman was bent over for 18 years, y'all remember the story in the Bible? She was in bondage. She had a spirit of, of infirmity. And before Jesus prayed for that spirit of infirmity, he rebuked it and then he prayed for her healing. So I'm decreeing and declaring this day that spirit of fear that has led to trauma in your life that has made you physically ill. I want you to think about when this first happened in your body, what you were going through. And we're going to believe that this day you're going to be healed of those infirmities. Jesus still heals. Do y'all believe that? We believe in doctors and medicine and thank God for them, but I can tell you, I went through a very uh, horrible time a year ago. I had just announced, okay, we're, we're forming a healing tour next year. Well, guess how the enemy took that? And I became so physically ill in my body, my digestive system, I don't know what was going on. My hemoglobin was down to eight, almost needed a blood transfusion. I was so weak. I got so depressed. I have never been depressed in my life, but I can relate to what people are going through because if you've never been through anything, you can't relate to anybody else. But since that time, I want to tell you, the Lord has healed me. He heals me from that. Because I went to all these doctors, spent all this money. I felt like the woman with the issue of blood. And some of you feel like that because you've been to every doctor. They don't give you anything but bad news. But you have positioned yourself today because the Lord healed me. And if he did it for me, he'll do it for you. But since that time, the Lord told me, he said, because of what you've been through, the anointing to heal will be intensified. And I can tell you every conference that we have had, people have been healed. And it's not me, it's him. 
to get the praise and the glory. I know the last uh, meeting I went to, I had three or four before I had been to that church six months ago and they said, I want you to know you prayed for me, I was healed. That's to build your faith that whatever you need, he still heals. Then there's something, that spirit of fear comes in your life and causes anxiety. And I know some of you face anxiety because the Lord has spoke that to me. And I know every time I go into a meeting, there are people that are coming up with anxiety and fear. Because see, that leads to depression. That will put you in a pit of despair that you feel like you can't get out of. And so many times we don't want people to know that we're dealing with anxiety because we're Christians. We're supposed to smile. Everything is happy. We're happy, happy, happy. And yes, the joy of the Lord is our strength, but your circumstances can change situations pretty quick when the enemy gets in your mind and says, this is it. You're gonna die. You'll never be happy. Things will never change in your life. So some of you have not slept any at night. You don't sleep well. You've got anxiety. Some of you have felt like you've had a heart attack and what it is is a full-blown anxiety attack. But I can tell you that is a tormenting spirit that's going to be healed today if you will get real with the Lord and say, Lord, I got to have some relief from this. You got to get real and say, I do have issues. Hey, there's a spirit of suicide in the land today. There's even been pastors commit suicide. We don't know the kind of battle. So please, if you're watching this program, get help. You have hope in Jesus no matter what you're going through. He's not finished with you. Your life has purpose. Some of you have the fear of rejection. Have y'all ever been rejected before? Praise God, nobody has. Well, I can tell you I have. (laughs) If you've been in ministry, you've been rejected. Because not everybody's going to like you, pat you on the back, and tell you how great you are. Have y'all learned that pretty quick? Not only that, they'll tell lies on you or whatever they can. But that means God's going to use you. But some of you have been rejected and there's a spirit of rejection. Maybe you've been in an abusive relationship. These are the soul wounds that we're talking about. These are maybe words that were spoken over you as a child that the enemy has used as a stronghold to say you're worthless. You'll never amount to anything. And those soul wounds run so deep that need to be healed. Because some of you have said, if I can just move to another state, I'll be happy. If I can just get out of Mississippi. Well, guess what? You are wherever you go. (laughs) And you can't get away from you. (laughs) So you might as well let the Lord heal you today and be happy where you are. Quit running. Some of you have been running your whole life. Running from one bad relationship to a worse relationship. Thought you had a bad job till you ran to another one and it's worse than the other one. Let the Lord heal those soul wounds. The Lord can heal those hurts. The Lord can heal those, those pains that just run so deep. Those bad roots is producing bad fruit in your life. It's time for those to be healed this day. See, some of you, I feel like the the Lord is saying you're covering things up. You got some covered up treasures there or covered up pain, really, that the Lord is revealing right now. Maybe things that you thought you were over. And the main thing is you got to forgive yourself. You got to give yourself a little grace and mercy. That's the hardest person to forgive is ourselves. Have y'all ever made a mistake? Got regrets? Wish you'd have done things a little different. We all do. But you got to understand that this is the day. Your destiny is in your future. It's not in your past. Some of you keep going back to the way things used to be. The pain of the past. What I went through. When God's got a promised land of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. But instead, you're just wandering around in this wilderness expecting things to change. The Lord wants to heal those soul wounds, that hurt, that pain, that abuse that you've been dealing with. See, when you've got that spirit of rejection, you don't want to be around other people. 
I'm going to stay right here in my little circle because I don't want to be hurt again. People are everywhere. You can't get away from them. And not all of them are a, a, a thorn in the flesh that the whole bush. And you better have the Holy Ghost and angels to be around in rooms with some people. But you can do it. You can do all things through stri- uh, Christ who strengthens you. <laughs> uh, but it all comes with knowing who you are in Jesus. And I want you to know that Jesus Christ loves you just the way you are. Quit comparing yourself to other people. Trying to compare yourself to magazine covers, they don't look like that. <laughs> I love when they put all these stars on there with that makeup. I thought that looks like me. (laughs) Be what God has called you to be because he loves you the way you are. He loves you. He loves you for all the L'Oreal that we put on our hair to cover up the gray. He loves us for all the blemishes and all the wrinkles and he loves us just the way we are. And some of you got to love yourself in a balanced way because if you don't love yourself in a balanced way, you can't give love to others. The Bible says to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind and strength and to love your neighbor as yourself. Well, some of you can't love your neighbor because you don't love yourself. You got to love yourself by giving yourself a little grace and mercy. That yes, I wish I'd have done things different. Yes, I made mistakes. Yes, I got knocked down, but learn from those mistakes. And say, okay, I'm dusting myself off. And I'm moving forward. That's the word for some of you. Yes, you blew it. But that's what the blood of Jesus is all about. Dust yourself off. And you know what? Sometimes you got to dust people. Not everybody that says they're for you is for you. Quit trying to chase people down that don't really need to be with you anymore. God has a circle for you that's got your vision and your purpose. Hang with them and believe with them. But the Lord wants to heal that spirit of rejection. Some of you didn't feel love from your parents. Maybe you never felt love from your husband. Maybe you've been through a divorce. Let the Lord heal that wounded heart. Because so many times that can lead to physical sickness in your body also. And the last fear that I want to talk about is the fear of failure. Many of you know exactly what God has called you to do but you keep making excuses. Maybe it's to witness to your neighbor. Maybe it's to start a business, a ministry, whatever the Lord's telling you to do. But here you're making all kind of excuses, but the root is fear. The Lord can make your comfort zone very uncomfortable when he's ready for you to do something. And some of y'all are feeling that right now because you know what the Lord's telling you to do, but you keep making excuses, but the root is fear. My greatest fear was public speaking. Doesn't the Lord have a sense of humor? (laughs) I would shake, rattle, and roll in front of a group. I know people just felt sorry for me. Thinking, bless it, bless it, Lord, look at her. (laughs) I know even in high school, do y'all remember when they would make you read and they would come around the room? I would almost hyperventilate before it come to me. And by the time it came to me, it's like, Bless it, Lord, she's a senior but can't even read because I was so nervous. So I can tell you, this is just a miracle from God. So sometimes, like Kayla said, you got to do it afraid. All right, it was Angel that said that. You got to do it afraid. Your knees may shake. You may say the wrong thing. But when you take a step of faith... I can tell you the Lord will be with you every step of the way. So many people will think, well, I can't pray for the sick. Well, guess what? You're not the healer. He is. Your job is to be obedient. The Lord gave me a great revelation before because uh, I prayed for my mother. My mother 
was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. She had never been uh, ill her entire life. At 67 years old, she was given three months to live. And I say this quite often, but every time I say this, it ministers to people, so I'm saying it to you today. But my mother, I had just gotten in the ministry, and, um, and I, man, I was so on fire for Jesus. I anointed her with oil. I took her to every prayer meeting. I believed in healing. And every time we'd go to the doctor, the doctor would say, it's spread. It's worse. Well, that rattles your faith. It really does. Let's just be honest. It rattles your faith, especially when you're new in ministry. You believe in what the word says. You're praying for sick. And so my mother uh, lived for two and a half years instead of three months, which was a miracle, but she did pass away. So after she passed away, the enemy really tried to work with my mind. If any of you have been through this before, you know what I'm talking about. Maybe it was through something you were praying for. And uh, so the enemy kept saying, you know, I wouldn't pray for the sick anymore. See, your mother wasn't even healed. I don't even know why you would minister. Look what you do, and, and look, your own mother died. And so that's when the Lord gave me the revelation. He said, you're not the healer. I am. Your job is to be obedient. And that gave me more of a fire and boldness to say, he's the healer. We're not. We got to believe and trust him. I've tried to pray with people before that they would come up for healing and I would try to pray healing and they would say, well, if this is the way the Lord wants to take me out, that's okay with me. And I'm like, this prayer is going nowhere. As long as you got breath in your body, you need to believe and have faith because God's will would be done, but while you're in the land of the living, you need to be speaking life and believing and having faith. He is God and his plan works and my mother is healed today. But I can tell you, I learned more through ministry through what I went through than anything else. I stayed with her while she was in the hospital for 30 days. I watched every part of the dying process. I was with her when she took her last breath. But before then, I didn't know what pain was. My, I have never had a pastoral heart. I admire you, Pastor Bailey. <laughs> I am not pastorized. <laughs> I am more, I admire pastors. I'm more of admit it, quit it, forget it. Let's move on. I'm an evangelist. We got work to do in the kingdom. Get well now. Be healed now. Be set free now. <laughs> but I can tell you, I learned more during that time than any other time in my life to make me a better minister. And you may be saying, well, why am I going through what I'm going through? What has caused you pain in your life? That becomes your purpose. Because all over this world, there are people that are hurting. They are going through things right now. And they need to know that Jesus is their hope. So whatever you need from the Lord, I know this message has pricked different hearts at different levels. But this is your day to be set free. Do y'all receive this word? Our ministry is to spread the hope of Jesus to this hurting world through the media. Television is very expensive, but so worth it. By partnering with us, you can touch people's lives all over, and this world needs Jesus. If you would consider partnering with us, you can make a donation through our website, sandrahancock.org, or through the address that's on the screen, or you can even call us at 1-800-579-7350. I want to thank you in advance for being a blessing. I pray this message blessed you. And some of you that are watching, you are so bound by fear. Fear of failure, fear of the future. Some of you are having anxiety and depression. I feel like I need to pray for you today specifically. Lord, I lift up everyone that is watching this program. I rebuke the spirit of fear. This spirit of anxiety has to leave in the name of Jesus and I loose the peace of God, the love of Jesus to come upon everyone. This tormenting spirit of fear must go now in the name of Jesus.
The Lord wants you to have righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And you can't have that if you're bound by this fear. And this is your day to be free. Now, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, we do have a 1-800 number. Call that number. I'll be glad to lead you to Jesus. Also, if you need special prayer, I'll be glad to pray with you also. Leave a message and we'll call you back. Now, I can't go off the air without thanking our partners. We sincerely love and appreciate you, and we pray for you every day. But we could use your help. Television's expensive, and we're trying to reach more people in these last days for Jesus, and any donation would be appreciated. God bless you all. Now, next week, we're going to have a brand new show, a brand new message. But until then, this is Sandra Hancock with Voice of Hope. And remember, your hope is in Jesus. So break every stronghold and shine through the shadows. Burn like, come burn like a fire today, Jesus. Your name, your name is power. Your name. This part gets me excited today. It says, Shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets. I'll shout Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Come on, say this. I'll shout Jesus for my family. God, I'll stand here and I'll speak the holy name. Jesus. My name is Sandra Hancock, and I want to thank you so much for tuning in to our broadcast. Many of you that are watching this broadcast, you feel like you're at the end of your rope. You've got some impossible situations, but I got some good news. You have hope in Jesus because we still serve a supernatural miracle working God of now. I also would like to invite you to come out and join us in one of our powerful conferences in a city near you. It would make our day to have you as our guest. If you think our broadcast is powerful, wait and come and experience the presence of the Lord. You'll love it. Also, I want to thank our partners. We sincerely love and appreciate you, and we thank you for helping us spread Jesus to a hurting world. God bless you all.